Okay, welcome to the first part of this course. Um, today there are two main topics. The first one is, uh, well, let's say, so far we, uh, we had linear problems, the Stokes problem, where we just had the uh, coupling of velocity and pressure as a difficulty. And today I, uh, there are two new difficulties that I'd like to start to uh, discuss. One is convection, first for a linear problem, the Rosin problem, and then also the non-linear non uh, term of the Navier-Stokes equation. Today, uh, I will, uh, the main part will be on the stationary Navier-Stokes equations, but the time admits I will also start with the time-dependent Navier-Stokes equations then. Okay, let's start with Ossian problems. Yeah, in Ossian problems, we have still a linear problem like the Stokes problem, but we have one additional term, a convective term, like in convection diffusion reaction equation, so we actually have two additional terms. We have also just a term without the derivative of u. And so, the uh, difficulties in these equations are still the coupling of velocity and Pressure, but this I discussed already for the Stokes equation, and then the case of dominating convection. And um, this equation is studied because, as I will say uh, in a moment, uh, equations of this type appear in the numerical simulation of uh, incompressible flow problems. And it is also studied from the uh, point of view of analysis because it's still linear, which simplifies a lot. So the coefficients are viscosity, convection field, where we assume that the convection field is divergence free, and a con uh, coefficient c, which is bounded, uh, is essentially everywhere, and in particular it is bounded from below by some uh, constant c naught, which might be zero, but otherwise it should be positive. Then uh, it's a linear equation, we can just multiply the equation by some uh, Vector, which is not zero, it still has the same equation, and therefore uh, I uh, will say that um, the scaling should be such that the L infinity norm of the, of the convection field is just one, and we are interested, of course, uh, in the case that the viscosity is uh, weaker than the convection field, in this sense. Uh, as a in this case. Oh. What are the interesting cases? The first uh, case is that nu is um, not so small, it's of, of moderate size, and c is equal to zero. That means if we go back here, uh, this term vanishes. Yeah, uh, this uh, occurs in the numerical simulation of steady state Navier Stokes equations, this situation. I will talk about this. In the second part of the lecture today. And the other interesting case is that nu, the viscosity is of some size, arbitrary size, it might be very small, it might be not that small. And C is uh, the inverse of a time step. And equations of this type appear in the numerical simulation of the time-dependent Navier-Stokes equation. Okay. Then uh, well, we are doing the usual things, going to a weak form with appropriate bilinear forms. Now here we have this additional bilinear form compared with the Stokes equations. And again, uh, I will show some short proofs and just to uh, show you some essential ideas uh, here directly, not at the board, but again, I think it's better to do it here. But, uh, to uh, present these proofs, it's becoming less because it's becoming more and more complicated. It's not long or short. Okay. First of all, uh, stability. And therefore, we need this uh, property here. Uh, yeah. If uh, uh, the divergence, uh, by our assumptions, the divergence of V is, is in L2 and uh, B is divergence-free. And then you can see, here this is just uh, the product rule, 
uh, this uh, yeah, identity. And since divergence of B is zero here, uh, we can see that this term is minus the same term, so this term has to be zero. Yeah, B times divergence V tested with V, with the last two arguments. So we have just a skew symmetric property. And the skew symmetric property is then used in order to show uh, existence and uniqueness of a weak solution. And so one just can apply Lex Milgram, and one has to show the coercivity of the binding R form. That means one just uh, inserts, uh, one studies the binding R form with the same argument, VV. And then this convective term vanishes. Well, this term is also equal to zero by assumptions on C, but that means it can be bounded by the norm of in the space V squared and we have the factor of V. But it means uh, existence. And so in order to perform this proof, we really need uh, that V uh, is divergence free. Yeah? And then we have Uh, we have um, existence and uniqueness of a solution by us, not the complex middleman. So stability of the solution, again, uh, one likes to bound appropriate norms of the solution by the data of the problem. And uh, here, in, from now on, or even yesterday, uh, the dependency of, of the bounds on the co coefficients uh, are, is important. Yesterday we had just the dependency on the viscosity mu, but here uh, yeah, one can get, one can have two stability estimates depending on on uh, the uh, regularity and uh, properties of the data of the problem. Yeah, again I can show it here quite shortly. How does it work? It's just below. So um, the first estimate is the same as for the uh, Stokes equations. Again, one can use that the uh, convective term vanishes, so that means in, on the left hand side one gets just these two norms. Uh, this can be estimated by the dual variant and by the uh, Young's inequality in order to. Oh, sorry. Not good. In order to uh, give this first estimate, but if one has some more regularity on the right hand side, and if uh, this lower bound for the uh, uh, term without the derivative is positive, one can also just here apply Cauchy Schwarz, and then one can proceed in this way, one inserts here this factor, which is larger than, uh, larger or equal than one, has here the other factor, and then at the end one has this, uh, this estimate by, again, implying Young's inequality. So that means, depending here on the situation, one can have two estimates, and for the interesting situations, if c zero is equal to zero and mu is uh, small, let's say, then this is a large factor. But if you have some time step which is not too small, then we have the then is the, here we have the inverse of the time step, and that this is not too large. So then, in this situation, this bound is better. Yeah, for the pressure, the estimates can be obtained with the subconversion, as we have seen it yesterday for the Stokes equations. Okay, now uh, I will first uh, consider the Galeog infinite element method to just replace the infinite dimensional spaces by finite dimensional spaces, again, conforming in substable finite element spaces, then we have just this abstract form, and one can prove existence and stability for the finite element solution, exactly in the same way as for the continuous problem. What about the finite element error estimate? Uh, yeah, again, under some usual assumptions, and um, one gets this estimate here. Yeah? Now, uh, because of the form of the equation, one has here the 
uh, L2 norm of the gradient of the velocity error. Here one has something like the L2 norm of the velocity error scaled with the square root of C can be bounded by uh, approximation errors and coefficients of the problem. Yeah, again, we see here the typical coefficient uh, in front of the pressure term on the right hand side, and we have this additional coefficient C O Z. Yeah? And um, this I will discuss in a moment. Uh, we have here not, uh, another constant C which depends not on the, co not on the coefficients and the triangulation, but uh, because of the Poincare field is in a quality on the diameter of the domain. Okay, let's have a look at this co uh, constant. So this term is in applications small. This term here might be large, so C is the inverse of the time step. So for small time steps, this term is large. And here, uh, okay, this is of order one by our scaling. And the minimum is large. If C zero is zero here, then we have just one over the square root of the viscosity. Otherwise, if this time steps are not so small, this term is also not so large. Also it's becoming more complicated here with all these discussions. Okay. So the, the proof is in principle the same as for the Stokes equation. So has the only additional thing to, the thing to do is to estimate the convective term. This can, can be done again in several ways depending on the situation. The uh, general situation is like this, so we can just apply the equation by uh, parts here to get the gradient from the interpolation error to the uh, uh, yeah, discrete difference of the interpolation and the final element solution. Then one applies here the Helder's inequality and the Cauchy-Schwarz uh, and Young's inequality. If, uh, again, if this uh, bound, this lower bound for the term without, uh, or for the coefficient at the term without the relative is positive, one can also just apply here.